Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever had a day that you planned for for a long time, set in the future, for a really big and exciting event? Maybe it was for a wedding. Maybe it was for a special birthday. Or perhaps you're reuniting with family or a friend that you haven't seen in a long time. And you've got it in your calendar. And even when it's still a long way off, every time you see it, you're looking forward to the day. But waiting kind of stinks, doesn't it? Especially when it's for something you're really, really excited about. The days seem to get longer and longer as time grows near, as you await the arrival of that day, the anticipation grows. You're getting closer and closer, and you begin to long for each day to be that day. Now, in my life, this most recently happened with regards to my own wedding, and it was very much like that, a day set in the calendar, many months in advance. And as each day drew nearer, you anticipate with joy what that day will entail. And now in our house, we have a new anticipation with the arrival of our first child in May. Creating even more each day a joyous anticipation for the arrival of our child. So I bet many of you have similar days, similar things you can think of in your past where you had this great thing happening on your schedule, and every day that draws closer, you just can't wait for it to get here. Whether it's your own wedding or the wedding of a child, whether it's a family reunion that you haven't been to in many years, there are many different things that we anticipate. Well, that's really what the season of Advent is about. And you probably were wondering when we were reading the gospel today, that it seems like an odd choice of a reading for the first Sunday of the church year, the first Sunday of Advent. Why are we focusing on the second coming of Jesus and the judgment day and all of that? That doesn't seem to fit. And I even myself double-checked it to make sure when I was first preparing for the sermon that I wasn't looking at the wrong week. Because it seems out of place. But as you read it and think about it, it begins to make more sense. In the church year, this is sort of bridging us from where we just left at the end of the church year into Advent, where, in fact, we have the exact sort, same sort of anticipation happening. We are, it turns out, a people of anticipation, a people awaiting the action of God at some future date. So that's why there seems to be this text about the second coming of Jesus in Advent, because Advent has the same sort of anticipation as we share now as we await the return of our Lord in victory. After all, that is what the word Advent means. It means coming. And so we are preparing ourselves for the coming of the King. So the season of preparation and anticipation that we are now in is for the first advent of our king, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that's the connection, this anticipation for what God is going to do. But it's a little different than the example I gave before because right now, because advent, the first coming, has already happened, we have a day on our calendar to look to and we know when it's going to happen. But it wasn't always that way. Before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, all they had was the promise from God that he would send a Messiah. They didn't know exactly when it was going to occur. Just like now, we don't know when our Lord is going to have his second advent, when he's going to return to make everything new. You see, Christians are a people of anticipation. It seems that we're always anticipating the coming of our King. Well, let's look at the Gospel reading. 
because it has some themes of note. One is the theme of suddenness. He goes through great lengths here to highlight how you will not know when the day will be here. It's going to be like any other day. You're going to be doing all of the stuff that you're normally doing. Right? And he gives us a few examples. He says you're going to be eating and drinking. You're going to be getting married and being given in marriage. You're going to be going to the grocery store. You're going to be going to work. You're going to be getting in your car like normal. And boom, then it's going to happen. From what we know of the story of Jesus on Christmas, pretty similar pattern. Mary didn't know anything was going to be happening to her until the angel of the Lord appears to her. There's nothing in the scriptures that note that that's a special day in any way. It's just another day for Mary, and all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord appears to her and says, you are going to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Which I don't know about you, but that makes her response even more incredible to me. That I am your servant, let it be to me as you will. But she didn't know what was going to happen. Neither did Joseph. He didn't know what was going on. He actually thought I should divorce her so she's not shamed. And then the angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream. And then he realizes something else is going on here. And even the earthly rulers of the time had no idea that the God of the universe had taken on human flesh and become a man and was born into the world. Because it was just like any other day. Herod has no inkling that this is even happening until the three wise men show up on his door and ask him about the king. And then he has to go and consult the scribes and say, hey, what does the scripture say? Where do they say the king's going to be? Because they weren't ready for it. It was like any other day. So what do we do then? As people who are people of anticipation, how do we deal with the reality that we're not going to know that it's going to be sudden, that it's going to be like any other day. Well, congratulations, you're doing one of the things right now. In our gospel reading, he says this, he says, therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. So the question we ask ourselves is, how do we stay awake? How are we ready for when he's going to come? Because We don't know what day it's going to be. But it means to be in church, like you are today, receiving the gifts of God, having His words revealed to you. And as we enter into the season of Advent, you're going to have a list, a growing list of things that you can then use to say, "Eh, I don't really need to go. Is that right? It gets busy, everything gets crammed together. If you're in school, everything is finishing up. If you're at work, you're trying to get all the deadlines done before the vacation for the end of the year. As a family, you're trying to get together, not only with your own immediate family, but extended family in other places, driving around, buying gifts, navigating holiday traffic. It gets pretty hectic. And it can be really easy in the midst of all of that to lose sight of Jesus, to lose sight of the anticipation that is ours as we await his arrival. Now, don't forego those other blessings. There's nothing wrong with seeing family and having presents and having family traditions. Those are all great things. But they become not great if they draw you away from the one who is coming, if they draw you away from Jesus. So if you travel out of town this holiday season to see family and friends, find a church where you go and go there. Maybe pick up some Advent devotionals. There's a lot of those that come out around this time of year. Be in the Word with your family. You can even get an Advent wreath at home with some candles. If you have your, if you got kids, they'll probably fight over who gets to light the candle each time you do it. And do your devotions. Be in the Word. Be in church. 
At Ascension, we're going to have a Christmas Day service this year because Christmas Day is a Sunday. It's here at 1030. We would be delighted to have you join us because what, after all, is Christmas all about? The birth of our Lord Jesus. But if you're out of town and the church nearby that you, that you are, the church that you're near doesn't have a Christmas Day service, open up your Bible and read Luke chapter 2 and say a prayer of thanksgiving for all that God has done. That is how we are to stay awake when we don't know the day. And so Advent calls us to return to those practices, to return to those gifts regularly to remain in anticipation of what is to come. But lastly, you may be wondering in the midst of all of this, what is all the fuss about? Yeah, it's Christmas, and it's the same holiday every year, and we've got our traditions, and I don't really even have any great big gifts that I want, so what's the big deal? Well, as, as you all probably know, all those things that you were thinking about at the beginning of the sermon of a great day of anticipation in your calendar, there's really nothing special about the day. I got married on January 2nd. There's nothing that really sets apart January 2nd from January 3rd. The day itself is not what is special. But what occurs on that day? And so we celebrate Christmas, not because the day itself is special, but because of what happened on that day and what it means for us. On that day, God became man. On that day, he was born into our world under the law, giving up all of his divine power and glory to be born in a stable. And if that were the whole story, there wouldn't be this much fuss about it in the church. But the reason that he came, the reason God became man, the reason he was born makes all the difference in the world. You could go as far to say that after this day, nothing is the same. And if that isn't a day of anticipation, I don't know what is. Because after this day, your God can relate to all of your suffering. In his great compassion, he walks along with you in them. He took on the very weakness of our flesh. After that day, God set his face to Jerusalem, where he would pay the penalty for our sin on the cross and give us new life in him. That is what the fuss is about. That is why we eagerly anticipate the day of Christmas. Think of it as the first dawn of a new creation, a new world that is going to be fully fulfilled in his second coming, when he's going to draw all nations to himself. And there's no more sin, no more sorrow, no more tears, only life everlasting forever with him. And that begins in earnest on Christmas. What a day. Mark it on your calendars. Let's joyfully and eagerly anticipate the advent of our King this Christmas season as we go through the season of Advent. Not only for his first Advent on December 25th as we celebrate, but also for his second return, his second coming, when he will take us to be with himself forever in his kingdom that has no end. In the name of Jesus, amen.